remain in Mexico policy because that abated the last surge. That would end this surge as well. And so somebody has to force them to do that. And hopefully it's not a bad event that makes that happen. Well, Ronald Vidal, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Good to be with you. While thousands of migrants were able to easily cross into our country this weekend, the Biden administration put on quite a show at Saturday's Justice for J6 protest. Police officers armed in riot gear prepared for another insurrection. Only problem, there are more police than protesters. But first, Biden refuses to take any accountability for the mistakes he's made. He's been in hiding while the country crashes down on his watch. We speak with Christian Whiten about what's at stake next. Federal agencies urge every family to have an emergency radio. During any disaster, electrical power may get cut. The emergency radio gives you the vital information you need. Newsmax wants you to have the Dynamo Emergency Band Radio. It doesn't need batteries and works in any emergencies. It retails for $30. You can get it with the free offer. Call or go online and get the emergency radio today. Your life may depend on it. Did you know color is vital to your health? I'm not talking about the color of the walls in your house or your car or your clothes. I'm talking about the color of the food you eat. A colorful diet is a part of staying well because many nutrients are color. The antioxidant lycopene is the red pigment in tomatoes and pink grapefruit. Chlorophyll is excellent for balancing pH and cleansing the body. It's the green in kale, spinach, and broccoli. Resveratrol decreases inflammation, and it's the purple in grapes and berries. Eating a wide variety of fruits and vegetables provides your body with diverse chemistry it needs to heal itself and stay well. Eat the peelings of things like apples and carrots and cucumbers. Balance of Nature is whole produce. It contains all the vital parts in balance. Color, taste, and smell keep you well. And that's what you get with Balance of Nature. Start now by going to balanceofnature.com and don't forget to use discount code NEWSMAX. You know, the only thing Joe Biden seems to be good at is creating problems. Yet during his campaign, he ran on the promise of fixing those problems that Biden, of course, blamed Donald Trump for. Now Biden is hiding behind his press secretary as she goes on an apology tour for all of his mistakes. Today, Jen Psaki addressed the failed Afghan drone strike that killed young children. As a human being, uh, as a president, as somebody who has uh, overseen loss in a variety of uh, scenarios, both as a leader and personally, it is a, it, his reaction is it's a tragedy, uh, and every loss is a tragedy, and he supports the efforts to the effort to move this forward as quickly as possible and to have a thorough investigation. Saki also spoke about how Biden plans to fix our now strained relationship with France over a new sub submarine deal with Australia. The president will have a call. It has yet is we're still working on the scheduling of it uh, with President Macron in the coming days. And what I expect the president will do on that call is reaffirm uh, our commitment to working with one of our oldest and closest partners. And folks, even the mainstream media is calling out America's loss of credibility on the world stage. Here's a hardball question, courtesy of CNN, surprisingly. But just given what's happened in recent weeks and some of the criticism that he's faced in many of the capitals of the allies whose partnerships he plans to, you know, vow to reinvigorate, does he believe there's work to be done to restore that credibility or, or you know, to is there address a country the or that... Well, tell me which, which, which country is telling you that we don't have credibility in the world? I didn't say countries are saying there's no credibility, but there has been criticism in foreign capitals in recent weeks. Now, here to take us through all of this is a former senior advisor in the Trump and Bush administrations, Christian Whiten. Christian, thanks for joining us tonight. Great to be here. Thanks. You know, Biden campaigned on restoring respect on the world stage. Uh, what do you think the perception is now globally? Yeah, the, <laughs> the perception is quite the opposite. And it's funny, it's not just the opposite among our adversaries like China and Russia and Iran, but the very people that Biden was supposed to be super good at uh, putting us back in the good graces of old Europe, France, Belgium, the Europeans, NATO, they were so upset with that icky man, Donald Trump, who asked them to do what they had promised to do, which is spend a somewhat meager 2% of their gross domestic product on defense. Biden was supposed to fix that. And actually, those people have been particularly 
particularly mad at him. Of course, France is in the news very much. Also, the rest of the Europeans were upset that he actually, you know, Donald Trump on his way out of the, the White House uh, lifted the ban on Europeans traveling to the United States because we had reached a similar level of vaccination and of COVID incidents. Biden put that back on and only recently just announced that that may be liberalized. But um, really, people around the world either think that Biden is a joke or they're very upset with the way he's conducted himself. And obviously, Macron not too happy with Biden right now. Biden wants a phone call with him. Uh, as far as I know, that's yet to be determined whether it's going to happen. Uh, what's your guess and what does that conversation sound like? You know, it's, it's hard to tell. Um, honestly, the French are the ones at fault in this instance. I think Biden, again, if he has these super awesome relationships with old Europe, then why did this happen? After all, France did not withdraw its ambassadors from China when they had a huge human rights crackdown in Hong Kong or Iran when they uh, shot a whole bunch of their own citizens for protesting peacefully. But, you know, they, they pulled back their ambassadors from two Democratic allies over a commercial dispute. That's their choice. It's an odd choice. But again, you know, Biden was supposed to return to normalcy. He was supposed to have the secret handshake uh, with these people. You know, the decision that Australia make is made is not above reproach. You could argue that the nuclear subs that they've selected are going to be way too expensive. They have no nuclear industry. They say they're going to get eight of them. I'd be surprised if they get more than two or three. But that was Australia's decision. It's its, it's, its own uh, country with its own military and defense budget. So, um, you know, Biden maybe had, should have done a better job of managing the relationship, uh, at least the in the process of informing France of what was going on. And Christian, there are also a lot of questions about our relationship with China right now. Saki, Jen Saki addressed that today. Here's what she had to say. Well, first, I would say the president's view and this administration's view is that our relationship with China is one not of conflict, but of competition. Uh, and so we wouldn't agree with the characterization of the relationship. We recognize that uh, China is a country that, while we have, uh, while we may take issue uh, with some uh, means they engage in the world, uh, we also have areas we will want to continue to work together. Seems like they forgot about holding China accountable. What do you make of uh, Saki's comments there? Yeah, Jen, 1999 called. They want their talking points back. Uh, you know, we have decades of experience now, and it's not just the United States and our neoliberal foreign policy experts at the Harvard Kennedy School or at SICE or at Georgetown who get to decide what our relationship with China is. China gets a vote in that as well. And China has made abundantly clear that they do not want to be a strategic competitor or a partner in some areas. They want to be an adversary in all areas. They want to push us out of the Western Pacific. They want to end a system where they think the United States uh, predominates, or at least has more power than other countries. Uh, and, and no amount of happy talk and covering up from Jen Psaki and others is going to change that. And that's the real shame. We're going into the speech tomorrow by Biden at the UN General Assembly. He'll talk about the rules-based international order, which is a liberal construct that just doesn't exist. He'll talk about democracy and human rights, which doesn't really work when yeah. you just killed seven children because you were in a hurry to react. Uh, and you've been showed a profound and consistent weakness against China and Russia. And, you know, Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin are, are well aware of that. All right. We'll certainly look forward to watching that speech tomorrow. Christian White, and great to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Folks, the COVID crisis tells a tale of two Americas told inside and out of packed stadiums across the nation. The mixed messaging over masks and mandates is never more apparent than in the world of professional and college sports. That's next. For veterans recovering from the wounds of war, supporting one another is a lifesaver. I served in the United States Army in Vietnam, and that's when I stepped on a landmine that resulted in the traumatic amputation of both of my legs and my left arm above the elbow. I was alive, but I didn't know what the rest of my life had in store for me. Multiple deployments have caused a huge problem with those that served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and it's difficult for them to come back and adjust to civilian life. There were moments of frustration. You can't do this anymore. You can't go here anymore. I absolutely felt like I lost my purpose. I was looking at a long period where I wasn't going to be able to do anything for myself. I just didn't want to be here. 
Many veterans feel abandoned or alone till DAV steps into their life. For 100 years, DAV, Disabled American Veterans, has been supporting veterans and their families in their time of need by helping them receive the care and benefits they've earned. But your help is vital to keeping this promise alive. The biggest struggle is spending the rest of your life in a wheelchair. DAV showed me it was okay to be a disabled veteran. The disabled American veterans made me feel useful again. DAV came in when I was still flat on my back and got me through that rough state that I was in. When you call or go online with your pledge of just $19 a month, we'll send you this DAV blanket as a way you can share your support. If I can reach out and share with other veterans what I've been through, that's a grand opportunity in DAV. It can really make a difference in the lives of many of these veterans. Please call or go online to helpdav.org and donate now. They've given their all for us. Please open your heart and give what you can to them. There are so many more disabled veterans who still need your support. Please call now or give at helpdav.org. Thank you and God bless you. When it comes to real estate agents, experience matters. The best agents know how to market your home for top dollar and navigate through a complex transaction. At Ideal Agent, we created our smart seller system with top rated local agents to sell your home for as low as a 2% commission. I was amazed in the fact that my house sold in one Day. Ideal agents saved me in the neighborhood of twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars in commissions. The process was as easy as it gets. It was turnkey. I'm a very busy guy, and they just took care of everything. They are the number one way to sell your house. I've used Ideal Agent two times. Ideal Agent guided me through the entire process, every step. You want to have the best agents, but you want to get the best deal. Using Ideal Agent with both properties, I've saved over thirty thousand dollars. Our service is free available nationwide, and there's zero obligation. Call us today or visit idealagent.com. Is college football saving America? That may be a bit of an exaggeration, but I do believe, firmly believe, that college football as a cultural phenomenon is leading the country back toward normalcy. Once again this weekend, we saw absolutely packed stadiums all over the country of mostly maskless fans cheering raucously for their teams after tailgating just as raucously in many cases. In some ways, it's a tale of two cities in the United States. That's Penn State right there for their famous whiteout. They had a, a big game against Auburn Saturday night. Absolutely packed stadium, 90,000 plus people in Happy Valley, but not far from there, folks, are Washington, D.C. and New York City, places where you have to show your papers to get a hamburger. And that's what I mean when I say, in many ways, it's a tale of two countries, a tale of two cities. Uh, let's also listen in on the action down in Florida at the University of Florida at the Swamp in Gainesville. Here they are. The Florida Gator fans singing Tom Petty, I won't back down. Now, that's a long-time tradition there, but it seems particularly fitting for today. So to discuss this, I want to bring in former NFL player, former Arkansas Razorback star, and current candidate for Senate from the state of Arkansas, Jake Beckett. So, Jake, am I exaggerating when I say that college football might be at least part of what's leading America back to normalcy here? Well, not at all. I think in many ways uh, these college and pro football fans are in the vanguard of the fight to restore some semblance of sanity uh, back into our country regarding these uh, COVID vaccine and, and mask mandates. Uh, because I think these packed stadiums every Saturday and Sunday show just how preposterous the Biden administration's policies truly are. I mean, just consider for a moment in, in, in the subject of college football, you know, a large portion of those 100,000 fans are students who are forced to wear masks in class all week before they go to the games maskless. A large portion right. of those fans are people who may have already been fired or are under threat of being fired from their jobs for not taking a, a, a vaccine against their will. And I'm sure some of those fans have children who are forcibly masked as young as two years old on airline flights or in preschool or in elementary school. It's totally insane. And I think you're exactly right. These full packed out stadiums are an act of defiance against this lunacy. Right. 
No, and I think that's what that's why there's a particular exuberance, I think, in college football. There's always an exuberance, but particularly this year. And by the way, I want to ask you about the problem of, of the inefficacy of the, of the virus restrictions. Let's look at the state of Washington, for example. The state of Washington is one of the most vaccinated. It's in the top 10 most vaccinated states in America. 96% of the elderly population there is vaccinated. They've had some of the most onerous mask mandates there uh, throughout the entire crisis. And yet, look at hospitalizations. This is a chart of hospitalizations which are absolutely spiking in Washington. Washington state. Unfortunately, let's also look at deaths. Unfortunately, deaths are also spiking in the state of Washington. Now, by no means am I trying to celebrate this. This is terrible news for the state of Washington. My point here is that even the harshest of lockdown states have been unable to contain the virus. So my, my question to you, Jake, is don't we have to learn, though, particularly those of us who are not vulnerable to the virus statistically, don't we have to learn to live with the reality of the virus? You're exactly right. The only way through this is just as you said, it's to get through it. We have to protect those among us who are vulnerable, the, the sick and the elderly, those, those with comorbidities. But for the rest of Americans, we have to get back to living our lives. We have to show some humility. We have to understand that we're not gonna be able to stop an airborne flu-like virus through government policy, through iron-fisted lockdowns. That's just not the way this works. And I, I think the American people are starting to wake up to this. And I think as you pointed out earlier, these, these sports Sporting events uh, are, are starting to show that you know, maybe, just maybe, the tide is beginning to turn. Right. Now, let me, last question for you, Jake. I want to ask you about a lot of young athletes. You were a stellar athlete. You were a star, all SEC at the University of Arkansas. You have a Super Bowl ring from the New England Patriots. You also decided to join the U.S. military after that. We'll have you on another time to talk about that topic. But a lot of athletes uh, who were, who are where you were when you were a teenager, high school varsity athletes right now, places like Northern Virginia, they cannot compete if they refuse to get the shot. Your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's ridiculous. I think that no one should be forced or coerced or threatened to take this injection against their will, especially if you're a young and healthy athlete, especially in high school or even elementary school or college. I mean, to the best of my knowledge, not one person in college or pro major sports in college or pro football has been hospitalized or died due to the effects of COVID-19. And that's especially so for younger people. This is not a virus, thank God, that affects the young and healthy, those without comorbidities. I, I think that it's ridiculous that these high schools and elementary schools are forcing young children who are not in the uh, most vulnerable demographic to take these injections. It's wrong. Hey, man. Well, you're bringing a lot of common sense to this and, uh, and to the Senate race. You certainly would to the United States Senate if you get there, and I think you just might. So, Jake Beckett, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. You bet. Listen, unfortunately, the woke general strikes again. According to a new report, Mr. White Rage Mark Milley is more of a social justice warrior than we originally thought. If you can believe that, you won't believe what he said about destructive Black Lives Matter protesters. That's up next. Do you know what kinds of harmful things are floating in the air inside your home? Bissell does. That's why they created the Bissell Air 320 Max Air Purifier. According to the EPA, indoor air quality can be two to five times worse than outdoors. That means in otherwise clean homes, there can be millions of mostly invisible particles floating in the air. Things like smoke particles, mold spores, pollen, microscopic flakes of dead skin, soil particles, pet dander, and even VOCs and other harmful chemicals. The larger particles can eventually settle out of the air as dust on the surfaces of your home, while smaller particles can remain suspended for days in the air you breathe, irritating your eyes, nose, and lungs, and aggravating allergies. <laughs> The Bissell Air 320 Max cleans these particles from the air with three levels of filtration, including a fabric pre-filter that captures larger particles and pet hair, a medical grade HEPA filter that captures 99.97% of microscopic dust, pollen, dander, allergens, smoke and other irritants, and a carbon filter with thousands of activated carbon pellets that captures cooking and pet odors and harmful airborne chemicals like VOCs, leaving your home filled with simply clean air so you can breathe easier. 
My husband does have cat allergies and we do have two cats. Thistle has really helped us to pull a lot of that dander out of the air. He's noticed a huge difference. The Bissell Air 320 Max Air Purifier, thoughtfully crafted for simply clean air. Call now for a special offer with free shipping and receive a Bissell My Air Pro Air Purifier, a $99 value, free. But call now. This special offer is for a limited time only. I put it in the kitchen, and when I cook fish, it eliminates the odor almost immediately. Hi, I'm Max Bissell, fifth generation family member involved in the business, and I'm excited to be talking to you today about the Bissell Air 320 Max Air Purifier. We designed the Bissell Air 320 Max Air Purifier with an advanced system of three large filters to thoroughly clean the air.